In this part, we'll be creating a workflow that's tied to the form that we created earlier. Go to Workflow, Manage Schemes, and create a new schema. Call it Vacation Request. Then add actors that'll contribute to the process with different sets of rules. Some of them will check roles, while others will check the current user. Okay, first add author, and give it a rule, check user, and a value, author ID. Then add manager with the same role and type in the manager ID value. The next will be our big boss with a different rule. They'll check roles and the value will be big boss. And accountants also check roles with the respective accountant value. By the way, these check user and check role functions are provided by the basic plugin. The first one checks the current user with the document attribute, for example, author ID or manager ID. If there's no such attribute, it'll authenticate the user by login or email. The other function checks the user's role. Okay, now let's click Save. And now go to Parameters. It's right there on the panel with curly brackets. Create a new parameter, name it Comment, set its type to String, and set its purpose to temporary. Now go ahead and save. After that, we'll need to add commands to navigate through our workflow. Create the following commands one after the other. Start, Approve, Reject, and Paid. Since we'd like to get feedback if the document is rejected, we need to add a functionality to leave a comment while rejecting so the author can apply the necessary changes. For the reject command, click Create for input parameters and type in the name comment with exactly the same parameter. That's it for the commands, so click Save. Now let's configure timers. Go to this menu item with the clock, create a new timer called Send to Big Boss, select its type as interval, and set a value of 10 minutes. Then add code actions. It'll require the big boss to sign the document in order to proceed with it. We'll type in check big boss must sign and set the type to condition. Turn on the async checkbox because this action will be asynchronous. Now click edit code. And this time we're going to insert this code. And once again you can find it in the doc via the link in the video description. Okay, great. Let's go through the code real quick. The getEntityAsync function returns the current model so you can set various conditions. In this case, the amount is set to greater than 100. Compile this piece of code and you'll get this message if everything is correct. Click Save to keep the code changes. And in the upper modal window, save the code actions. Then create a new activity by clicking this button with the list. Name it Draft and name it State Draft as well. This is the initial step so this checkbox is set automatically and the activity color will be green. Now in the Implementation section, select the action Update Transition History. And in the Pre-Execution section, select Write Transition History. OK, looks good. Now let's create a new connected activity from here and go to the transition settings by clicking on it. Now set trigger to command. The command itself will be start and the classifier will be direct because we'll advance forward. And oh yeah, we gotta add restrictions here and select our primary actor, which will be an author. That means that the authors will be allowed to start a workflow by submitting new documents. And that's all for this transition. OK, now change the second activity's name to Manager Signing with the identical state. The actions will repeat the previous ones. Now create a connection and point it back. The command will be reject. It'll be managers who are allowed to do that, 
and the classifier will be reverse. OK, looks good. All right, now let's create a new activity with a transition to it. And we'll name it Big Boss Signing. The state will be the same. We're going to keep it consistent through our workflow. And don't forget to add actions for implementation and pre-execution implementation. Now let's configure the transition by clicking on the arrow. It'll be direct. The trigger will be a command. And the command will be approve. And again, it'll be managers who are allowed to perform this transition. But in this case, we'll need a condition that the big boss signed this document. In order to expedite the workflow, we'll need to apply a timer. If none of the managers looks at the document, it'll automatically be sent to the Big Boss. So we'll create a new transition from Manager Signing to Big Boss Signing. The trigger will be Timer, and we have our timer that we added earlier selected here. OK, next, our Big Boss, of course, can also reject the document and delegate review back to the managers. and managers can approve the document under the condition Otherwise. And that'll be our accounting review. Now don't forget to update and write transition history on this step. Create a path back. and link our Big Boss activity with the accounting. And now, from the accounting review, we'll only add one more activity which is approved. And this will be the final activity, so check the checkbox here, and don't forget to add actions for implementation and pre-execution implementation. All you got to do is configure the transition step that leads to it. The command will be paid, which means that everything was confirmed, signed, and paid by the accounting team. At this point, the employee who underwent this workflow has everything set up for a vacation. Now let's save this workflow schema. Looks nice. OK, now let's create a new form and call it Workflow Comment. We'll upload a template for this form, and it'll be used for adding comments when this form is rejected. Under the Events tab for the Confirm button, we have two actions, Validate and Workflow Content Execution. And for Cancel, we have Workflow Cancel Execution. OK, now save. And we can do a live preview by clicking Open. Looks good. Now let's do the mapping. Go to Command Forms, and select the rejection step of our Vacation Request Workflow Schema. Map the Vacation Request dot Reject command onto the Workflow Comment form. Now save. And last but not least, let's connect our main document form with our workflow. Go to Manage Forms, find Document here, and then click on the Workflow button. Select our Vacation Request form, apply, and save the form. Alright, now everything's ready for final testing. In the previous videos, we've added users, created forms, designed a Vacation Request workflow, and added actions and other business logic for this system to work. 
Now let's test how it works for multiple users who work on the same workflow. So I'm going to use two browsers to minimize switching between users and provide a better workflow visualization. The primary browser will be used for admins, and the secondary one will be used by the system's users. Okay, first let's recap who's going to take part in this process. The regular user is John, and he's going to create a new vacation request. His manager will be Mark, and he's also a user. Sylvia is the big boss, and Maria is an accountant. So, let's switch to the other browser and log in as John. We'll go to All Requests and click Create at the top. Okay, let's name it John's Vacation in June. And his manager is Mark, and his email is set automatically because it's on his profile. And the money amount will be $5,000. The comment will be, my Yellowstone trip, finally. Let's click save, and the state becomes draft. All right, now let's click start to launch the process. It changed the state, and the URL now contains a process ID. And at the bottom, we can see an updated approval history and availability to other users who are Mark and our boss, Sylvia. Now let me switch to the admins browser to see the schema side by side. We'll go to manage instances, and here's our process instance. We can see that the current state is manager signing, and the active state is yellow. Okay, now let's log out from John's account and log in as Mark. Mark's sidebar will indicate that he has one request in his inbox waiting for his action. We'll go there, open the request, and now we can add a comment. Okay, we're done with that, and now we can approve it to hand it over to the big boss. The approval history has been updated, and the current state in the admin panel shows the big boss signing activity. Okay, now that's all for Mark for today, so let's log in under Sylvia. Well, looks like she has a request in her inbox, too. And we can add a few words here. And we're done with that. And we can approve it. Now the process has gone by this path to the accounting review. And finally, the last step. Let's log out and log in under Maria. Go to Inbox, open John's request, and we can see that this user has a custom form action for this user. It's no longer approved. So we can click Paid. And here we come to our final state. Now John can go on vacation and have fun with his five grand at Yellowstone. And our business system is fully functional and it works as expected. Now, if you followed these tutorials and created a system like this, you can test out other scenarios, such as rejecting with comments, automatic transition on timer, or setting states manually by admin. Thanks for watching this tutorial series. Now you know how to create a business application, add users, add forms as a part of the user interface, link them with a data model, add code actions and triggers, and create a workflow and test out the system. Feel free to customize DWKit to your own requirements. Thanks to its design, it's easy to get started in the admin's UI, add custom server actions and action handlers, or even modify the system's source code. You can create a workflow model that matches business processes in your organization, test it, and start using the system in less than a few days. And go ahead and read the documentation for more information and details on how to use the system. Thanks again and have a good one.